Hello guys, welcome to today's lesson in which we're going to see 2.73, 2.7.3 and 2.7.4 which is the solution of quadratic equations and quadratic inequalities by the quadratic formula and the other um, lesson is the discriminant and the nature of the roots of a quadratic equation. Okay, let's start. So, let's begin by saying the following. We know, supposedly, that's why I'm writing the interrogation mark, the question mark. We know that if we have a quadratic equation of this form, in the general form or standard form, then the quadratic formula, which is this thing that we have been known since maybe junior high, okay, this quadratic formula, you already, most of you know the shape of this, uh, the place of each of the constants and so on, then this quadratic formula gives you automatically the two roots of this quadratic equation, okay? And you learned this by rote memorization, and uh, why do I say that we know, supposedly? Because there is a big difference between knowing in mathematics, like really demonstrating something on your own and just believing it, okay? Um, most of you, if I'm not wrong, just have supposed that this is true because some teacher told you, and that's not exactly wrong, okay? Maybe in junior high, you're not really uh, skilled enough to prove this formula. But now, today, you are really going to know why x equals to this thing gives you the two roots of this quadratic equation. And that's what we're about to do right now. <clears throat> so in what consists uh, the demonstration of the quadratic formula? How can, how can we find that, in fact, that formula gives us the solution to a quadratic equation in its standard form, okay? How do we do it? How do we solve this equation so that we can get the quadratic formula? Okay, listen guys, all we are doing to get that formula is the method of completing the perfect square trinomial, okay? That's all we're gonna do. We're gonna complete the perfect square trinomial which you are supposed to know by now. So let's do it. Here we go. First thing, remember, you have to have your, your equation in a standard form, which we already have. And then you have to make the coefficient of the x squared equal to 1. You don't want this a here unless it's a 1. So how do, we, how do we make sure of that? We divide both sides of the equation over a. All of this over a equals 0 over a. And if I divide each of these terms over a, I get x squared plus b over a times x plus c over a equals 0. That's the first, that's the first thing you're going to do. You're going to uh, rearrange things so that the x squared appears with a coefficient of 1, which we already have. That is the first step. Okay, now let's complete the perfect square trinomial. What do we do? We leave all the terms with x on my left side. And we pass the other one, I'm abusing the language, of course, to the other side as negative, okay? And then, like, like I've been telling you several times, in order to complete the square on the left side... Uh, no, let, let, me, let me do something actually easier. Let me do a relabeling, you know? I think it's proper. Uh, do you remember this technique? We're going to relabel. Okay, we're going to write b over a, this, this number, which is b over a, we're going to write it as k. I'm relabeling all of this number as k, and all of this number, c over a, I'm going to relabel it as, let's say, m. Okay? Perfect. So, with that relabeling, this equation here looks simpler, because it's not going to have fractions. b over a, which is k, kx equals minus, minus c over a, which is m. Uh, that's going to make things simpler. Okay, and now we complete the perfect square trinomial. 
we're gonna get x squared plus kx plus remember the square of half of this number and we add it to both sides like so let's continue over here okay now this is a perfect square trinomial right which can be written as a binomial to the square what what binomial this binomial again this should be somewhat easy for you now okay and like I always tell you if you want to stop the video for a moment and make sure of some things you can do it and the right side I'm just gonna write it down again okay now at this point everything is very easy we just take the square root in both sides and we get x plus k over 2 equals plus minus the square root of all of the right side and finally the last step is isolating x from this left side and I'm gonna get minus k over 2 plus minus the square root that I have in this side okay and guys we are completely done let me tell you why I know that this doesn't look like the like, like the quadratic formula but let me tell you why I, I'm telling you that we're done what is the purpose of all that we're doing we're trying to solve this equation okay that is that is our aim that is our goal we're trying to solve this equation what does that what does that mean it means to isolate X if by some process I can isolate X I'm done okay we have done such process, which is a valid process, and we have arrived at the isolation of x. x equals minus k over 2 plus minus the square root of this fraction to the square minus m. Now, do we know k and do we know m? Yes, absolutely. Why? Because k is simply b over a, which are your original constants, which you, of course, know. Okay, so if you know B and A, you know K. And conversely, do we know M? Of course, because M is supposed to be C over A. Other two constants from your original equation that you, that you know. So basically, we know K, we know M. Everything on this right side of, the, of this formula is nothing but K, M, and the number 2, and some square roots, etc. So we have we can conclude basically that this is a perfect solution. We are done. Okay, now the rest is just simply substitute the k for what it is. For example, minus, what is k? k is b over a over 2. Can you see what I'm doing? Plus minus the square root of k, which is b over a. I'm sorry. b over a over 2, all of that to the square, minus m. What is m? It's c over a uh, square root, and we're done. All of this thing is my complete solution. If you notice, x equals all of these things which are just constants. And basically, we have solved our original problem. Now, you may be thinking, okay, uh, even though we have solved the problem this right part does not look anything like 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 what we know right the the standard quadratic equation which is this the thing that you have been learning since junior high right this doesn't look like this and i and i agree but uh i've been telling you countless times in mathematics two expressions can look different and yet be the same so this expression on the right side of this equation and this expression on the right side of this equation are exactly the same after some reduction okay mathematicians said okay this looks a little complex why don't we just play with these things doing some algebra etc so that we can reduce it to a more manageable form and in fact they did after playing with 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 these things and they found this reduced form okay but they are 
exactly, exactly the same. Okay? Okay, now, I'm going to tell you how to reduce from this uh, equation or, or from this form of the equation to this form, which is the one you know, as a bonus. Okay? Remember that the bonuses are things that you're not supposed to watch uh, necessarily or mandatorily, but I strongly recommend it, guys. It's very cool to be able to know why this stuff is equal to this. Okay? Okay. So, basically, we are done with the... Uh, with a demonstration, basically, unless you uh, you can say that you can say that you're done when you, if you watch the bonus. Uh, but in this video, I just want to mention another thing, which is the discriminant. Okay, so let's let's take the the quadratic formula. I'm gonna erase all of it now, and let's just take the quadratic formula one more time. And now let's discuss something called the discriminant. What is the discriminant of a quadratic equation? Okay, the discriminant of a quadratic equation or the quadratic formula is just this expression inside the radical. Okay, so the discriminant is by definition is equal to b squared minus 4ac. This is what we know as the discriminant of the quadratic equation or the discriminant of the quadratic formula. Perfect. Now, why is this expression important for us? Okay, because by just analyzing this expression, b squared minus 4ac, we can determine the nature, the nature of the roots of our quadratic equation. Okay, why? Because of this, look. Okay, um, this number, b squared minus 4ac, can be either positive, zero or negative, right? That exhausts all possibilities. This can be positive, zero, or negative. Let's see what happens in each of those cases. Let's suppose the discriminant, let's suppose the discriminant, I'm just gonna call it D, okay, for, for short, is greater than zero or positive. What's gonna happen to this to this uh, equation, to this quadratic formula, what's going to happen? If this, if the discriminant is greater than zero, then all of this, uh, once you take the square root of a positive number, you will get a real number. Do you, do, do you agree with that? The square root of a positive number, we are assuming that this, that this that the discriminant is positive, is going to be a real number. So let's suppose that number is uh, let's call it, I don't know, E. Any number, any any constant works. So after we take the square root of the discriminant, we get E. And E is a real number. So basically, we're going to get the following. That the roots are going to be X equals minus B plus E over 2A. And the other will be minus B minus E over 2A. So basically, we're going to have two roots. Two real roots in the case that the discriminant is positive okay we get as a conclusion or as a deduction that our equation our quadratic equation will have two real roots and they're going to be different of course why because well i mean i think it's obvious right one will be minus b plus e over 2a the other will be x1, x2, the other root will be minus b minus e over 2a. And they are clearly different, right? This plus and this minus makes everything different. So when the discriminant is positive, we get two real roots and they are different. Okay, that is the first analysis. We have two more to do. Now, same quadratic formula. 
there it is. And now let's assume that the discriminant, let's suppose that the discriminant is equal to zero. What's going to happen? Okay, then all of this will be reduced to minus b plus minus the square root of zero over 2a, which means that x equals minus b plus minus the square root of zero is zero. So basically, we, well, we have this, right? And basically, we have the following minus b over 2a. We don't have to write plus minus zero, right? We only have this. Now, you may be tempted to say that uh, if we assume this, that the discriminant is zero, then we only get one root, you see, which is minus b over 2a. And I know that that's a very common uh, conception, okay? But it's going to be erroneous. Why? Because in higher algebra, we always say that a quadratic polynomial always have two roots. A cubic equation or a cubic polynomial will have three roots. Um, an equation of order four will have four roots, etc. Okay, it's a, it's a little hard to understand, but in this case, what we say is this. We don't have just only one root, which is this. What we have is this conclusion. When the discriminant is zero, we say that our equation has two roots, two real roots, I'm sorry, two real roots that are equal. Equal to what? To this. So two real roots that are equal. And you may be thinking, well, then it just has one, right? I mean, if they are equal, why, why do we make the distinction between them? I know that that's hard to understand. Those of you who will go into engineering or some scientific uh, college, uh, you will get it, okay? In this, uh, in this case, I, I have no time for, to go in, into that because it, it would take me an awful lot of time. So we say that there are two real roots that are equal, equal to this, minus v over 2a. I hate it when I cannot, I cannot explain many things to you. I don't like that, but every mathematical course has constraints or, you know, scope. And you cannot deviate too much from that scope because you would get infinite re regression. Okay, and the final supposition suppose that the discriminant inside the radical is less than zero or negative let's 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 see what's going to happen then we're going to get this minus b plus minus the square root of a negative number right let's say minus e whatever we're going to get the square root of a negative number something that is negative because all of this being the discriminant we're assuming is less than zero and we know that when that happens, uh, the solutions are not real because there is no real number such that the square root of a negative number is a real number, okay? So basically what we say is this, the conclusion for this case is that our root, I'm sorry, our equation has two complex roots, okay? and different they are different this is the the conclusion okay so basically you will have something uh which some kind of some some sort of numbers that we have not touched upon and that we will not study these type of numbers are not studied in in high school so basically you can say in here that you you, you can say this my equation has two complex roots and they are different Another way to say to say the same thing, more or less, it it would be just saying my equation, my quadratic equation, in the case that the discriminant is less than zero, my quadratic equation has no real roots, no real roots. B both of these things are um, valid, okay? And I would advise you, I I would advise you to go for this one better. Okay, this would be the most precise at this level of education, okay? Okay, so that's the nature of the roots. That's what we mean by the nature of the roots, whether they are real or complex, and whether they are equal or different, 
okay and just by looking at the discriminant of my equation we can know such thing let me give you a very quick example uh, suppose we have this equation 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 okay so this is a this is b this is c and even even without solving the equation without solving the equation i'm gonna know what type of roots my 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 equation has okay what do i look at the discriminant b squared minus 4ac so what is b b is 4 to the square minus 4 a which is 2 c which is minus 3 in this case and let's calculate all of this we're gonna get 16 and then minus 4 times 2 times minus 3 you will get plus 24 all, all of this will be plus 24 the minus and, and the minus get uh, converted to a plus minus and minus plus so how much is this? this is 40 right and the sign of this is positive so my discriminant for this particular equation my discriminant is positive is 40 the, the 40 doesn't matter what matters is that it's positive and therefore I already know just by looking at this number at the sign of this number that the roots of my equation will be real and different just by looking at the discriminant and that's how you can know just by looking at, at, at a b and c and computing this this expression the discriminant of your equation you will know what the nature of the roots are even without calculating them that's how it works guys so that's it thanks so much